What's up, Craig? What's up, Joe? What's up, guys? Uh, how you doing? We're, We're back. back. <laughs> We're back. See that? So it took us months to come out with a second ep- another episode, and now we're just back to back with another Look one. Look at it as seasons. That's it. That's right? It was yeah. season that one. Was season one. We took the summer <laughs> off, took go. a little bit of a break. And now we're back, we're back with season two. Uh, season two is going to be better than season one. That's we what happens. So. Yeah. We, you know, we yeah. kind of amp it up. We got new equipment. Yep. We have some new sound stuff going on here, so I think we're in business. Yeah, yeah. So Very today, good. we're going to talk about something different than just the gear, but the reason we're here basically and our influences who got us to this point right that's a good one we didn't have influences we wouldn't be sitting here talking about guitar because something's gotta it starts somewhere it starts somewhere so we're gonna talk about that and you're gonna click the subscribe if you haven't already (laughs) and while you're doing that yes we're gonna have coffee so we'll salute you thank you for subscribing because we know you're clicking it right now thank you (laughs) and we we like that. So anyway, all right. So you're a little little Joe, right? And uh, you know, maybe you're playing baseball, you're going to school. What possessed you initially? Not what drove you to become really good at guitar, but uh-huh. what initially said, wow. And I have a feeling, I don't know that you're going to have the same answer as me, but I know my answer is a lot like many other people our age. But I want to hear what got you going. What was the first? So it's a really good question. And it's, for me, there's two things that sort of occurred around the same time or within about three or four months of each other. Okay. Uh, The first one was I uh, was, you know, hanging out with a friend, playing baseball, whatever it was. Went to his house. He had an older brother that was uh, in a room playing an electric guitar. Okay. And... I don't remember hearing it. I just remember a visual. And I thought that was really cool. Right. Okay. Fast forward maybe three or four months. And this thing in my mind was saying, you know, oh, check this. Take a look at like the, I don't know if it was the Sears catalog or one of those home shopping oh, catalogs. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is obviously whatever. a thousand years before yeah, the internet, yeah. right? Yep, yeah. And yeah. and there were guitars and there were electric it was like, guitars. It was the Middle there. Ages, I think, right? It was. <laughs> it was like the 1400s. Yeah. There was electric guitars in there. And I would just be like, wow, these look so cool. And yeah. they were very 80s. One looked like an Explorer. Yep. And, um, and then at that same time, it, it was like a whole bunch of things going on. I started hearing music on the radio differently. Started hit hearing guitar now. It wasn't yep. just mm-hmm. the, song the song on the radio. Yeah. I was hearing guitar. Pieces, yeah. And the thing that tipped the scale was seeing the music video for the Def Leppard photograph. Oh, okay. Video, yeah. song, All photograph. Right. Yeah. So that's early 80s. When that came out. Yeah, it was, this is early 80, 83. Yeah, okay. At that same time, I had started playing guitar. It was all happening at the same time. So I had, it was, I think, March. Okay. Of 83, and uh, I asked my parents to bring me to a store to get a guitar, and I got an acoustic guitar, uh, which I still have. Nice. And um, as I was starting to take lessons on this acoustic guitar, doing the, all the basic mm-hmm. stuff, yep. that was happening. I saw that video, and then I went to a record store, and I started buying cassettes based off of like the album covers. Now, let me stop you there for one second. Not to cut you off, but I'm, it's interesting because... You're taking lessons on an acoustic guitar, but the stuff you're listening to yes. is not acoustic. No, it's not. Is it driving you a little crazy? Yes. That, yeah. So yes. go ahead, because I have a similar situation. And, and I, I remember, with. I think the first three cassettes I bought all at the same time, because they were all brand new, it was like March or April of 83, was Quiet Riot Metal Health, mm-hmm. Def Leppard Pyromania, and um, Iron Maiden uh, Peace of Mind. Nice. All at the same, like right, the same right. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, I was hooked. And then I had a couple of friends who were taking lessons. They had mm-hmm. electric guitars. They were starting to play songs that I knew. Yeah, yeah. And um, I stuck with it. And my parents saw that, you know, you hey, were, he's sticking driven, with yeah. these driven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's get him an electric guitar. So it was July of <clears> that year. I remember the, the date. It was July 27th, 1983. My dad took me to uh, the store, uh, Sam Ash Music Store, yep. and uh, went in there, and I, I picked out a guitar. 
And that was it. And that was it. It was an Ibanez Roadstar 2. It was nice. white. Nice. Three single coil. Yeah. And uh, that was my first electric. Cool. Nice. But yeah, it, it's kind of, it was convoluted. It wasn't a single thing. Yeah, it was yeah. sort of a, well, a yeah, menagerie. I guess it just kind of, something has to accumulate. But it was all at the same time. Yeah. You know, which is important. Yeah, you know, oh, it's, definitely. It's like I had this yeah. thing that I wanted to play a guitar because I was hearing music differently, playing the guitar, and then all of a sudden this music started coming at me. Sure. And it was like, all right, I need to take this forward. Right. And yep. so I did. So for me, I remember, of all things, remember those telethons that used to be on TV? Sure. Um, they had Kiss played on one. Okay. And they showed, like, I don't know if they were in the studio or they just showed, like, video footage of a mm -hmm. Kiss concert or whatever. And I remember hearing the sound of the guitar. The distorted sound of the guitar scene, obviously the big stage show and spitting sure. blood and fire, and I was like, sure. it's cool, I'm a little kid. That got me started. That got me interested in the sound of the guitar. So you had the visual first. Mm -hmm. Mine was kind of like the visual, but not the visual of the guitar, the visual of the entire band and oh, what they were doing. The production. With, but I was keying in on that distorted sound of the guitar. I loved it. And um, simultaneous, like similar with you, I used to go to my grandmother's house on Sundays, and my aunt, who uh, had some an old electric guitar in the basement, it was this like 1962 seafoam green Ibanez electric. Uh, the headstock was like this big. <laughs> I'll never forget. That. And it's she had this little string. like this little amp that was a tube amp. Obviously, it was like from the 60s or whatever. And I remember I would always plug into it when I go there, and it was out of tune and rusted strings. And I would like hitting the strings and wondering why I'm not getting that sound. Right. And when I turned the knob, you would hear like the static from the uh -huh. dirty pasta book. Yeah, it's like that, <laughs> like that sound kind of like, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> but to all get the it. time. Yeah, all the time. But I couldn't get it to go simultaneously. I couldn't get that sound with like when uh -huh. I strum it. So it, drive me, it used to drive me nuts. Like, why can't, how do you get that distorted sound? Right? Yeah. So it kind of soured me toward the guitar because I thought maybe there was something special going on and I just didn't know. Like, how was it happening? How was that sound coming out when I can't get it out of this? Right. Thing? So I lost interest in it. But really? I always had it in my head. So that like kind of fueled the fire at the beginning. Uh -huh. And then it wasn't until probably a year after your story where I saw Van Halen live. Right. And when I saw Eddie, that was the end. It was it. It was like the bug was there and there was no turning back from right. there. And that's when friends of mine were playing and then sure. I learned about distortion pedals. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was kind of... So really... My initial influence, you might say, was Ace Freely, but just from okay. the sound of a guitar, but from the actual playing of a guitar and saying, I want to learn how to do that specifically, was definitely Eddie Van Allen was my first guy. And he was my guy for uh, quite some time. Right, yeah. 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 And I know you had the other guy, right? So Randy was your main guy, I think, right? Yeah. We talked about yeah, because I, I started, um, you know, started progressing learning you know more metal stuff learning maiden and all those different sure. bands and around that same time started getting into the aussie records and i was just like yeah whoa yeah. you know this is next level yeah, I mean, yeah, you know sure. the guys in maiden and all those bands they're, they're really good players but this was another level of well, mixing influences from outside of the rock realm. because it wasn't just technique the yeah. technique was all there but it was the uh the theory behind it yep you know, it was a cool it songwriting. Was, like, cool, it was yeah. like educated. Yeah. You yeah, know, it yeah. was like intelligent. It was yep. like intelligent guitar sure, playing. Yep. And that attracted me. I was like, wow, this isn't just cool sounds. This is, you know, really real musical stuff going on. Sure. And I, I dove deep and I started learning everything. And yeah. my guitar teacher at the time, I'd go to him and every lesson was, you know, I want to learn the solo to, uh, you know, uh, S-A-T-O. Yeah, you're driving or him crazy. Over the mountain. You're driving him crazy. <laughs> driving him crazy, and I would practice it like mad yeah. all day, every day. And just, it, that seemed to last for years. Yeah, same same here with Eddie. It I mean, and it's thing. just digging into, you know, there's yep. not a lot, of, you know, there's two albums, basically. Yep. Yep. But, but I, a lot I dissected playing. everything. And still to this day, there's takeaways for me in a lot of different respects from recording to, you know, putting solos together, multi-tracking stuff, because Randy multi-tracked everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just little echoes of things, and there's some of the solos that are on there uh, are just, to me, some of the the greatest that there ever and will be. memorable, right? It's not just the technique. It's, it's not only those... memorable. It's There's a connect, there's a feel thing going. So my favorite, all-time favorite Randy solo is the outro to the song Tonight. 
Okay. Which is on Diary of a Madman. Yep, yep. So it's a slow ballady song. And at the, like, the last minute and a half of the song is like a long solo. Yeah, yeah. And it's a big, long fade out. But it's perfect. Yeah. It, it is perfectly executed for the song. Sure. And that's, yeah, and that's And this critical. feel and this technique and is the sound and it's... And I dissected that thousands of times. Sure. You know, to try to key in on, well, what is it making? You know, is it... Is sure, it just the yeah. feel? Is it with the same? Whatever. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that, that to me was, and then it was just the song construction and, and the whole nine. Sure. Yeah. The whole nine. And then after Randy, who was the next guy? Or was it just at that point? He got you started and then yeah, and there was a million influences. There was a million, that. but there was a few key ones. Obviously, you know, Steve Vai was a yep. big one for me. Uh, totally into Steve Vai. Uh, Neil Sean. Oh, yeah. He was another favorite of mine. Uh, another, just a total connection. He just, he's always in the pocket, always plays right for the song, knows when and when not to go over the top. Sure. Um, just absolutely slamming player. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, guys, again, when Ingve came out, it was almost discouraging to me. Yeah. Got to remember, this is pre U2, all that stuff. It just seems so damn yeah. difficult. What is this guy doing? Like, it how just seems so yeah. hard. And then I started learning some of it. Uh, my teacher was teaching me some of the stuff. And I started to get a glimpse into it. And I'm like, wow, this is just... I'm going to have to sit here for years. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah. It starts to take away from the... The joy. The, not only the joy, but the natural playing like it feels unnatural when you're dedicating that much time to just getting the technique of it down right to me right. it just becomes not a natural thing anymore it becomes more like a learned robotic behavior yes right yes. you lose it's, a little bit of that right it's like you're not playing music you're just you're typing fast you're top, like you're, right. you're typing a hundred words a minute now. right right right, right. And you're not writing a story you're not writing a story you're yeah, typing you're a paper typing the same word right. yeah not the same and I'm not taken away from him not by all. any means. Not at all. He plays. He's it. on a. He's on a. He's, he's on his own level. So good at it yes. that it is natural. Yes. But you know look, that's a, that's a special. There, case. there are. I mean, if you want to talk technique now, technique is like through the roof. It's out of control. And there's there's people that make him look like he's not. Yeah. And that's right. the progression of it, right? But, but I don't think there has been anyone to enter the guitar scene. Give or take, maybe one or two people we could find in there that had as much impact. After Eddie, yeah, oh, definitely, and, and, yeah, yeah, and you know, still does, and and were, was as unique as he was when he came sure. out. Yes, there were guys doing some neoclassical stuff, not like him. No, 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 no. not even close. No, no, you're right. You know, you're like right. you could you're talk right. about yep. Blackmore, you could talk about uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, different couple of guys, Div totally different. Right, yeah. right. Yep. And then later on, I got into uh, like Aldi Miola. Yeah. Oh, sure. You know, yeah. and that was like a big eye opener again. Sure. Like, wow, yeah. this whole fusion thing, sure. and this guy's smoking. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, Lots of there's so many great players, yeah, so many great yeah. players. So yeah, and and for me, I mentioned at the beginning it was Eddie, and when Vi came out, and you mentioned Vi, he was kind of the next guy. Ingve yeah. was in there too, but the the next and everyone wanted, wanted to compare Eddie and Vi because of the David Lee Roth connection. Yep, and I remember totally different players, though. totally different player. And I remember being so anti Vi, really, because I was so pro Eddie, and it was like. This guy, we I know, we, and he was unbelievable. Vice technique is absolutely insane. Yeah. But I would refuse to believe it. Like really? I was like, no, wow. Eddie rules. Eddie rules. You know, would be fighting people like sure, at lunch, sure. like sure. at that age. And for whatever reason, I always appreciated what he was doing. But I felt like he was like the guy that was taking all the credit away from my hero. You okay. know. So I just couldn't warm up to him at first. A couple of years after that, Nuno came on the scene. Mm -hmm. So this was like early '90s now. Yep. And that guy freaked me out. Like, he was, like, just a different type of player than anyone else that was out there at the time. Like, he had the feel, the technique, but his technique was different. Like, it was sick, but it was different. It wasn't just, like, yeah, he could do it. But he was he sort had of a, a hybrid. He was, yeah, he was, like, the bluesy shred guy, sort of. Like, I can't explain it. Yeah. But it opened me up to... Guys other than Eddie. Like, all right, right. There's, there's guitar players that, other than Eddie Van Halen out there. Yeah. Now, as that's happening, so now I'm getting into Nuno. So now I'm starting to appreciate Vi because now, all right, there's other guitar players. I got to warm up to this fact. So now I start taking guitar lessons from the local legend who is John Petrucci. Right. right? Which at the time, 
when he was like he had an album out, but he wasn't at the point, of course, that he is today. Sure. But you knew he was getting there. And he had a tremendous influence on my playing. So really, when I think of the four big influences for me, it started with Eddie. Well, you can talk about Ace, but Ace just got me into the sound right. of the guitar. Right, right. Eddie Van Halen, then came Nuno, then I warmed back up to Vi, and now I love Vi. I think he's one of the greatest ever. I, I can't get enough of the guy. And then, of course, John Petrucci because of the personal connection. And, you know, again, and you talked about Ingve being at the point where you were like, oh, my God, this guy's ridiculous. Like, uh, that's how I felt kind of with John because I go to lessons and <laughs> walk out of there like, oh, my God. My Tail God. between your legs. Yeah, like, what am I even bothering right, for? Right, right, right. But, you know, it's kind of the double-edged sword. So it becomes influential. And at the same time, while you're there, you're like, yeah, I'm never going to be able to do this. But then when you go home to practice and stuff, you're like, I'm going to get this. I'm gonna... So when I go back next week, I can play in front of this guy. You know what's really interesting? Like, you know, you obviously you were taking lessons from John for a while. And I hadn't even heard him until uh, the first time I really heard him was probably right before the Images and Words. I had heard the yes. first album, but not long before then. You know, within a year Yeah. of, the, you know, maybe 90, 91. Yeah, I think I'm forgetting. I don't, I'm getting my years confused, but I started with him in uh, early, late 89, I think it was, or okay. early 90. That's when I started with guitar lessons with him. Okay. So that album had already been out, When Dream Day and Night, with Charlie Domenici. My first lesson with John was like a week after they had parted ways with Charlie oh, Domenici. Really? Okay. So I remember going down and I remember wanting him to play some, like it's AJM or something. I asked him to play that for me because I thought it was the coolest thing. And then he told me the news. He's like, oh, I know you're a big fan, but you know we're no longer with Charlie. And it took like a year and a half to find Libri. I remember going back every week to lessons. Like, Did you get him? Did you get one? Did you get one? Nope, not yet, not yet, not yet. And finally, they found him. Wow. And um, yeah, so, but yeah, that was a humbling experience every week. But tremendous, to this day, still a tremendous influence. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, he's just mocked. Without a doubt. Yeah. No, he was like, I think years ago, I mentioned uh, to you the way I viewed him as a player. And he was sort of like a, uh, what do I say, like a mad scientist sort yeah. of experiment. Like, let's throw in like one part technique, one part feel, yeah. one part, you know, whatever. And in, 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 in the world of these shred guys, when we talk about, you, you mentioned it before, that the technique has gotten completely out of control. But I think what separates a guy like him is his technique can rival any one of those guys. But as good as he is at that, is as good as he is at just coming up with the most beautiful melodic phrase right. or the craziest bluesy type Stevie Ray little licks here and there and his rhythm playing is monstrous he's like just this massive combination of every right, right. great facet of guitar playing right. into one human being it's, it's insane you know those other guys we talked about like eddie's not going to play to that level but he does his own thing really good and right. you know but john i think can kind of do anything really sure he's one of those guys yeah no without a so, doubt yeah so those are my three i always have my holy trinity of guitar plays and it was eddie nuno and petrucci and then you can draw in vi and then right. i got into yeah you know, i got into some of the fusion like like robin ford i always liked the way really? he played okay. west montgomery and the jazzy mm -hmm. and like joe pass those guys i got into those for a little while um and then the 80 shred guys like warren Martini, gilbert, loved them. Guys, gilbert. Yeah, yeah gilbert's yeah. ridiculous yeah. But it's cool because a lot of those players that we talked about, we've actually reviewed their gear. Yes. We did EVH stuff. We've done the Petrucci stuff. We've done the Nuno stuff. We did My Mar Jam, Martini. the Vi, yeah. Di Martini. So all those guys we've been kind of getting a little uh, review in on all my influences. Yeah. So I think that's why it's special. So no, That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, one other thing, too, um, is the local influences, like Friends. Oh, yeah. Right? And, that, and we mentioned it in another episode, but that was huge, too. You know, seeing Friends in the Neighborhood playing yeah. guitar and it, that was motivational to it was, me. yeah it's just like it, it, it drives you to the next level because mm -hmm. you want to fall behind right no you wanted to keep exactly. up you wanted to keep up and you know learn from each other and, and kind of get ideas and draw them back and forth and that was what's cool about it because it never felt competitive right it was just more like here check out this lick oh yeah what would you do there and then you learn that way so yeah it was a different world you know back yeah. then you didn't have yeah. the tools you have today like with youtube and it everything wasn't else youtube yeah but there was something special about that. When I think back to it, you know, the mystery is gone. Yeah. You know, when you turn on a YouTube. That was a big YouTube, part of it. It was. It's a huge part. It, it was. Yeah. You These know, guys I, were like, 
they weren't humans. They were kind of like these mythological yeah, guys. Yeah. Like Eddie was a guy on a poster. He wasn't a real human. I remember. You saw him at concert. Like, I remember first time I heard eruption and I didn't know what finger tapping was. Yeah. I didn't know what the hell. I'm yeah. like, what is he doing? Yeah, nobody did. You right? know? Only he did. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> he took the world by storm, but that's it. So guys, I don't know. Let me hear about your influences. Comment them down below. We'd love to hear about it. Yeah, do you like some of the same ones, you know, that, yeah. that we were influenced by? We have other ones. And yeah, maybe you turn us on to some players, too, that yeah. we may not have mentioned that are cool. I mean, oh, there's a million of them. And there are people that we didn't mention that oh, are tremendous players and of very course. influenced by. But, yeah, so that's the deal. Cool. All right, guys, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.